Due to its involvement of major organs, the chest cavity is a priority area of protection. Compromise of this area almost always leads to life-threatening injuries. It's also worth noting that the types of mechanisms that cause chest compromise are forces that are most likely going to cause trauma to other body systems too. With good assessment skills and quick procedures, we need to be able to prioritize the worst injuries and systematically stabilize our patients. We've covered assessment and now can quickly recognize that the treatment of chest injuries will take precedence. Now, we cover just what those treatments are. You'll learn all about these unique emergencies and how they require a more advanced assessment as well as much more specialized and potentially invasive treatments as we cover chest trauma. The reason trauma to the chest is of such concern is obvious. It contains two of our most vital organs for sustaining life, our heart and our lungs. There are a number of specific traumatic injuries to these two organs that the pre-hospital provider should be familiar with. Being able to recognize and begin treatment of these injuries can mean the difference between life and death for your patients. We'll start with the heart and its major vessels. Three major injuries are of specific concern. Aortic disruption, blunt cardiac injury, and cardiac tamponade. You'll remember that your aorta is the major artery pumping oxygenated blood out of the left ventricle to the entirety of the systemic circulation. Disruption or a tearing of this artery would therefore result in copious amounts of blood loss, lack of oxygen to the body, rapid decompensation, and eventual death. We see injuries like this most often when our mechanism of injury involves rapid deceleration, such as a car accident. This is because the aorta is fixed in the retroperitoneal space. The quick stopping of deceleration moves the fixed aorta, causing a tear. A complete tear is likely fatal, so early recognition of a partial tear is extremely important to prevent loss of life or propagation of that tear. Some giveaway signs of aortic disruption are the following. One, the mechanism of injury as previously discussed. Two, the patient reports chest pain with a tearing sensation. Three, hypotension and shock. Four, other chest wall injuries that are noted. Five, the pulse and the BP in the upper extremities are unusual or different from other areas of the body. And lastly, hoarseness, difficulty swallowing, and voice changes. This is because an expanding hematoma can put pressure on the esophagus and the laryngeal nerve. Definitive treatment is surgical repair, and rapid transport will be the most important life-saving intervention. Getting them there alive and stable will require good ABC management and treatment for shock. We do want to be careful of two things, however. Number one is we don't overhydrate our patient. While fluids are always an initial response to a falling BP, too much can cause additional internal blood loss as we flush the system. Secondly, we want to avoid pressor agents, as this will increase the tone of the aorta and propagate further loss of blood through the tear. You may be thinking this leaves us with very little in terms of treatment, and you would be right. Again, early recognition and emergency transport to a surgeon are your life-saving interventions in this series of an internal injury. In blunt cardiac injuries, a blunt object has struck the chest, causing the heart to become stunned and damaged. This stunning of the heart muscle can throw us into cardiac dysrhythmias. Depending on the location of the impact on the heart, we can have a variety of presentations. Our greatest concerns are left or right heart failure and dangerous dysrhythmias. Signs and symptoms of blunt cardiac disease are therefore a mechanism of injury that fits the damage, along with signs of heart failure like lung crackles and jugular vein distension. We may see compensatory tachycardia, cardiac dysrhythmias, or retrosternal chest pain. Unfortunately, due to the transfer of energy to the internal structures of our body, we may not even see any obvious signs of outside trauma to the chest. So we need to have a high index of suspicion for serious internal injuries, even without these obvious clinical signs. Treatment is mainly supportive, with early recognition and transport, as they can deteriorate fast. Limit fluids in patients with signs of heart failure, as the overflow can back the heart circulation up even further. If you remember back to your cardiac anatomy, you may remember that the heart sits inside a thin, fluid-filled sac called the pericardial sac. One internal serous membrane surrounds the heart, and another exterior fibrous membrane surrounds that membrane, with fluid in between. This allows the heart a minor amount of protection from infection, as well as lubrication for movement. 
If this sac were to accumulate blood inside of it due to injury, the sac's non-elastic nature would have increased pressure inside, driving pressure into the heart muscle, specifically the coronary arteries on its surface. The circulation becomes cut off and cardiac output decreases.